wake up to this, it's a good day. So these days you can hardly go a day without hearing about climate change and how increasing global temperatures are affecting nature and natural systems. Unfortunately, pretty much every time the climate change discussion comes up, the news we hear tends to be quite negative. And quite honestly, it can be overwhelming and even hard to accept at times. We wake up the next day and things are pretty much the same as yesterday, which makes us question the scientific results behind the climate discussions. A big problem is also that it's often difficult to understand just how scientists come up with their claims and their calls to action, as the scientific process behind the results isn't always communicated. So I'm up here in northern Sweden trying to figure out how uh, scientists are coming up with the results that are showing how this environment is changing. So let's take a look at it. This is the Latnajara field station, located in the northernmost part of Sweden, about 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, in what is considered the subarctic climate region. I'm up here with researchers from the University of Gothenburg to learn more about what life up here is like and the challenges these regions are facing. It's a remote place and it's a special place because it is in the Arctic and the Arctic is, uh, is different. It's a really beautiful place. And then, of course, it has a very, very interesting diversity, both animal diversity and plant diversity, which is really fascinating. I feel um, close to the nature here, which is, we can see how fast it's changing, something we, we lose in the society in general, I think. Latnajaure Field Station is located close to a thousand meters above sea level and the vegetation is characterized by low-growing tundra plants adapted to live in this harsh environment with short summers and cold winters. It may not look like it for an untrained eye, but this location is actually very rich in plant species, which is one of the reasons it was started up as a plant ecology field site in the first place and also why it soon became an important site in one of the largest and longest running global research projects set up to understand the effects of climate change on the Arctic and tundra plants, ITEX, the International Tundra Experiment. ITEX was initiated by Professor Pat Weber, who during the 80s, when the first discussion of climate change started, he was bright and understood that if we should be able to provide answer for policymakers and politicians and users in the future. We need to have a common experiment in many places across the Arctic where we use the same experimental setup, we use the same protocols. So the idea was pretty simple. Build an international network of experts and initiate independent projects and field sites globally in different countries and different habitats across tundra ecosystems. The study methods were to be simple and easy enough that they could be set up no matter where you were. What they came up with was a type of minimalistic greenhouse, referred to as an open top chamber or OTC. So I find this really fascinating. We have this really simple method. It's just plexiglass, open top, so that precipitation is going to be the same on the inside as it is on the outside. But this simple design is doing such a great job in what it's supposed to do. Increase the temperature on the inside by about two to three degrees centigrade. And if you stick your hand in here, you can clearly feel that difference in temperature. Dinner time! In 2023, the Latnajare Field Station celebrated 30 years of collecting data for the International Tundra Experiment. And the OTCs are still some of the first things you'll notice when you come up to the valley as they are put in all of the different types of vegetation habitats found around the station. Together with research data from all the other research stations found around the world using the same scientific protocol, the results are pretty clear. The common theme? Just a slightly elevated temperature seems to clearly favor the growth of the plants inside, which is of course expected in a greenhouse-like setup. But this change also showed to favor less common species in the area to establish and grow better. You see how this dramatic change is happening inside of these chambers as opposed to the outside. It's pretty crazy. The higher temperatures show that species of taller shrubs normally found in lower elevation and further south of here are now able to establish and grow much better than before. 
And this is where things get complicated. Because at first, it may sound like more and taller vegetation could be a good thing. But the research also shows that a taller shrub vegetation on the tundra, as a result of a slight increase in temperatures, would likely come with a bunch of difficulties for other wildlife, both plants and animals. For example, making it possible for species normally found in warmer, southern environments to extend their range into the tundra ecosystems and outcompete species specialized to live here in the cold. Plus, gas experiments actually show that as the vegetation changes, other processes in the ecosystem, such as the microorganisms in the soil, changes too. And it turns out that in total, more net carbon dioxide gets released into the atmosphere than taken up by the plants. All in all, the research confirms that the Arctic region is one of the areas that is hit hard and fast by changes to the climate, and the cascading effects are ultimately having impacts on more environments and people on our planet than just the ones who live up here. But the questions we always seem to come back to are, what can we do about it? And should we even bother at this stage? I know one argument is that uh, this is already happening and why should we try to stop it and can we stop it? And yes, we can stop it in the coming years because the latest IPCC reports show that if we can stop and reach net uh, zero emissions of greenhouse gases, we can go down and bend the curve until 2100. Uh, but we need to adapt as well because uh, we have initiated processes in the Earth system that are, are changing now and we have increase in water levels and there are more extreme weather events occurring. So we need to adapt our society to these, uh, to these changes. And that will cost money, but if we don't do it, it will cost even more. And I think the way we are communicating scientific results um, is maybe not the best. <laughs> I think actually science is a very unemotional uh, sort of looking at the world and people in general need emotions. <laughs> they need a story behind something.